keeping it real needs to be placed with keeping it seven seven hundred. Mm. Because it's not so much about cash flow; it's about having good credit. Mm. Because if you have good credit, you can get good cash flow. Mm. If you have good credit right now, it's a great time to buy property and rent it out and create multiple streams of income. Yes, sir. If you have good credit, if you don't have good credit, you can get good credit quicker than you think. Yes, sir. A lot of us don't do the work that's necessary to even go and see what is on there that could be taken off. That's old. That's wrong. That's antiquated. Those things that are call the people, stop running from bill collectors, call them, work out terms. Right now, people are more open to working out terms that may be able to create a window of escape for you to climb out of the ark and hit a new land again by just simply calling them on the phone and say, I've been hit hard by COVID-19. I was behind before. I'm drowning now. How can I work? I really want to pay you. How can I work to get that done? And get get your credit rating up as high as possible and leverage it against you don't have to. It's not about having money. It's about having credit. You can go out and buy a building with the equity that's in a good home. You've got equity in the home. Uh, you can leverage the value of the home to get the home. You can turn around and rent the home out or sell it and flip it and get m more revenue stream. You've got to be creative and you've got to be a risk taker. Yes, and sir. that's that's a scary thing in a crisis is to be a risk taker. But the, the, the art to being a risk taker is a calculated risk. This is not a wild leap of faith into the abyss of uncertainty. This is a careful, calculated, researched uh, opportunities that exist out there. They're going on right now. While we're talking right now, everybody's not talking like us, like like black people talk. Black people are talking about, oh Lord, what we go? When we going back to church? You know, <laughs> you know, you know. I, I miss singing in the choir. They say we lost all, and they use somebody else. And oh Lord, what's going on? We, we don't have. No groceries, we need extra groceries and all that kind of stuff. And That's I right. have to cook again. I can't eat out at the restaurants and all we're talking about all that kind of stuff. I want to see cousin Nookie and, and Nookie hadn't been over my house in a long time. While we're having those kinds of conversations, other people are forming uh limited liability partnerships. They're putting their resources together, they're collectively buying properties and splitting the rents for profits. They're they're buying neighborhoods and communities and opportunity zones for tax havens. They're, they're doing really, really smart things. We are normally not in the room where those conversations are had. We don't, it's not that we don't want to have them. We don't know how to have them because we've never been in the room. And what I've dedicated myself to do, Charles, of late is to interview a lot of very smart people and put them uh, on my YouTube channel so that our people can be exposed to conversations and how people think who survived the depression, who survived the civil rights movement, who survived those turbulent times and what techniques do we need to be thinking now? Uh, uh, I just did an interview with uh, one of your homegirls, Melody Hobson. And uh, yeah, yeah, I did an interview with her, a very, very smart interview that's coming out very soon. Uh, I've talked to senators, I've talked to uh, entertainers, I've talked to some of everybody as they rethink their industries and try to find viable ways to stay afloat and hopefully to close that hemorrhaging gap economically because we've got a lot of sociological problems, we've got a lot of spiritual problems, but 80% but of our problems can be traced back to lack of income. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Most of the things that people come up to you and ask for prayer for that they call a miracle is not a miracle. It's a money problem. Mm -hmm. A car is not a miracle. We don't need God to get a car. We don't need God to get a house. We don't need God to send our kids to summer school. I believe in God to send my kids to summer school. No, you believe God to grow a leg. Mm -hmm. You believe God to let you walk on water. You believe God to part the Red Seas. You strategize economically to solve the goals that we have in front of us. Uh, I tell people that God doesn't make tables. He only makes trees. Mm -hmm. So if you're praying for a table, don't talk to God because he was finished when he made the tree. Wow. Once he makes a tree, it's up for you to turn it into a table. Wow. God's not going to come down there and chop down the tree and sand it and do all of that part. We, we are drunk on faith. 
Mm. We're so drunk on it that we misunderstand what faith really means and what it's supposed to be. Yeah, and we're asking, we're at, we're believing God for you. Don't believe God for a bath. Mm-hmm. You just take a bath. You know, <laughs> you don't have to go into a shut in and anoint yourself with oil and just just pray that the, the angels will come down there and bathe. No, you just bathe. So, so there are certain things that we don't know the appropriate actions to take to have the greatest impact. And I say we because I have been in that number two. Over the years, I've been blessed to be in the most amazing rooms. And I feel like part of my calling is to bring other people into that room. And social media and doing things like this creates a space for people to hear another conversation. And for you to ask me to do this interview is in some ways gratifying because you get to hear somebody other than the guy who preaches. Mm -hmm. This part of the brain preaches. Mm -hmm. This part of the brain thinks. And it's a difference between hearing somebody preach and hearing somebody think. It's what I like about writing because when I get to write, I get to write what I think without the encumbrance of, of our religious traditions and, uh, and our congregational expectations. Mm-hmm. I can just put raw brain to pen. And uh, these types of interviews create the atmosphere for us to have those kinds of conversations. Everybody's not struggling. Everybody's not drowning. Everybody's not underwater. There's still a lot of success out here. 70% of businesses are still doing well. It's just that the 30 that's underwater are the 30 we work for and work with and work in. We got to get out of that 30. That 30 is dying. It's not coming back. We got to infiltrate the other arenas. You don't necessarily have to go back to college to take courses online for coding and get, get in an entry level positions as technicians because the world has taken a quantum leap mm-hmm. that nobody could predict into the abyss of technology because technology showed us that we can still have the meeting, that we can work from home and we can still get it done. Companies are rethinking, do I need the building? Do I need the workforce? Churches are rethinking themselves. Churches who were prepared for this survive this. Churches that were not prepared for this, there's gonna be some casualties uh, because it's hard to recreate yourself in in, in 60 days. Mm-hmm. Uh, you have to, lay the groundwork and do the infrastructure and build a networking and and understand it and learn it and get around people who are doing it. And unfortunately, we have an aversion for successful people, not an attraction. Most people are attracted to successful people. We have an aversion for them. We feel like they're Uncle Tom's and they're in the big house and we're, we're out in the cabins. What we should have is get close around them and learn what they know and listen at what they said so we can emulate it and teach our children. We have survived for thousands of years sitting about around the fires in Africa teaching our children who they are. And we've lost that propensity uh, to be every great teacher, every great teacher only became a great teacher because they were a ravenous student. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if you are a ravenous student, you will end up a great teacher. Wow. 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 No, that's, no, you just, you just swung on me. Just, I just got to say <laughs> Well, you asked me. I need some smell of socks. Come here. <laughs> I, uh, I, I, what I hear you saying, and I hear you saying so much, uh, and I, I want to go back and listen to this four, five more times myself, but, I'm hearing a myriad of things. I'm hearing the same place where doors are closed or closing, there are wide open doors. Absolutely. If we're only standing in front of the closed doors, never to look or even pray to be guided to the open doors, uh, we stay locked out and never enter into a new opportunity that's possibly, very possibly ours. Let's not leave it at prayer. Prayer is not enough to get you there. Uh, every 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 silo and circle and sociological construct uh, has barriers. Yes, yes, yes. It's hard to get into that circle. 
And when you get there, there's a discomfort because you don't feel like you belong. You don't know the language. You don't know how to dress right. Your wardrobe yeah. isn't prepared for it. Your vernacular is not prepared for it. Your temperament, your, your, your language is not prepared for it. Your political view is not prepared for it because some of the people who have the greatest influence think very different politically than you do. And so there has to be a reorientation if you're going to reposition yourself. Mm -hmm.